Well, uh, living in the digital era, there have been concerns in recent years that paper books would die out and all be replaced by electronic ones. But rest assured, a recent reading trend in Korea shows that paper books aren't going to go out of style anytime soon. A growing popularity of paperback. Our news feature tonight with Oh s o y o u n g It's well past 10 p.m. on a weekday. At this book cafe in southern Seoul, visitors aren't planning to leave anytime soon. They're here to read their books late into the night. If I go home straight after work, I end up watching TV. Of course, I could go to a library, but here I can enjoy my book with a beer or a coffee. It's a wonderful way to end the day. I can definitely concentrate better here than at home, and it's great that I can choose from books that I don't have as well. A number of late-night book cafes like these are springing up around the country, offering comfy spaces for reading without distractions. With the growth of the e-book market fueled by the use of digital gadgets, concerns about the future of printed books and traditional brick-and-mortar bookstores have risen over the years. But as these cafes show, the pleasure of flicking through the pages of a book hasn't been lost on young Koreans. In fact, it's a literary trend that's taking shape across the nation, with quirky reading venues popping up in unexpected places. These days, most Koreans shop for books online or at mega bookstores downtown. But tucked away in a quiet n e i g h b o u r h o o d in Seoul, there's a small independent bookshop that offers more than just good reads. It offers a unique experience. Each book is handpicked by the owner, who aims to introduce visitors to the works of lesser-known authors, not just the bestsellers. Lit with warm, vivid colours, the artfully decorated room creates the perfect setting for readings, book clubs and other kinds of intimate gatherings. Today, writer Im s o r a is here to discuss her new book, 29th Issue. I was inspired by a bookstore run by a Korean poet called Park i n h a n that served as a cafe and a salon for famous artists and writers of that time to share their ideas. In that sense, I wanted to introduce and sell new books, but also provide a venue where diverse people can interact with one another, increasing accessibility to literature and even generating new books. The number of independent publishers, whether individuals or small companies, has also been on the rise in recent years. Instead of targeting the mass market, they cater to diverse preferences and fields of interest. During my years at an established publishing house, I mostly worked on books by prominent authors from the older generation, a majority of them male. So when I started my business, I hoped half my authors would be female. I also wanted a balanced ratio of writers from the older and younger generations. Independent publishers, which tend to be open to working with undiscovered and underrepresented writers, can become an avenue to success for up-and-coming talents. Experts say, however, that for the new literary trend to become more than a fad, independent bookshops and publishers alike must continue to offer unique features and sales promotions that set them apart from established industry players. Surviving beyond the first two, three years requires core competence and a portfolio to form a self-sustaining business model. This can heighten the chances of growth and sustainability. If these businesses add up one by one, they will enhance the cultural diversity in our society. Korean readers are discovering that reading a book is about more than sitting down and taking in the words. Choosing what to read can be a journey, and turning the pages a sensory experience. Oh s o y o u n g Arirang News.